In a previous video, I showed you this, the Ender 3 Neo, and I gave it a really good review. Since then, I've been printing with this for over a month and a half, printing end caps for my e-leveler modules, and it's been printing flawlessly. The most I've had to do is maybe clean the bed a couple times for my finger oils. But other than that, it's been great. But I promised in that review that I would show you how to assemble it. So let me show you how to do that on today's Film It Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Ender 3 Neo does come as a kit, so you have to put it together, but it does include a pretty decent manual. They call it a quick start guide, and it's easy to read, and the pictures are decent and show you how to put it together. So this video is just a supplement to this manual. The first step is to mount the uprights. The one on the left, looking from the back, has the holes on the inside for mounting the power supply. The upright is held in place by two screws coming through the bottom and you use a 4mm Allen wrench to tighten them up. There are Allen wrenches included with the kit. The opposite side has an upright with two screw holes in it. Make sure those are towards the bottom because this is where the Z axis motor will mount. It's mounted the same way as the other side with two screws inserted from the bottom. Next we mount the power supply. Two screws, silver screws that are included, go through the upright and into the two holes in the power supply. The three millimeter Allen wrench is used to tighten these screws. The LCD is mounted on the front using two stubby little screws and these require a three millimeter wrench to tighten them. To install the threaded rod to the coupler, I like to take the putty knife and shove it in the groove. This way the threaded rod won't go below the flexible part of the connector and then tighten that up with a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Use two flathead screws to mount the motor to the beam. Leave one of the screws loose so you can adjust the threaded rod so it's right in the middle of the upper beam. Then tighten that screw to hold it into position. Assembling the cross beam is probably the hardest part of building this printer. Make sure you get the right end of the cross beam in place, then you have to slide the screw through the bracket and into the beam. You have to do the same thing with the second screw, getting it into position and tighten it, but don't tighten it all the way. You want to make sure the cross beam is flush to the edges of the bracket. Once you get those flush, now you can tighten both screws in place. Once you get them both tight, you should be able to run your finger across the beam and the bracket and really not feel a difference. When installing the belt, it helps to have a set of needle nose pliers to pull it through. Slip it through the cover that goes over the stepper motor, then flip it over and bring the other end of the belt through. And then this should wrap right around the motor. Now pinch the belt against the cross beam and then slide the hot end assembly over the top of it and make sure it's on the correct side opposite of the extruder. Now install the opposite side bracket. It should fit into one location and there's two screws to hold it in place. Install the belt idler on the opposite side of the bracket. Now this has two T-nuts to hold it in place. So it's best to tighten one, make sure you get it tight, and then do the other one. But leave it loose enough because we're going to adjust this guy. Now bring the belt around and we're going to hook it into the bracket on one side of the hot end. Flip it so the teeth are towards the brim and then slide it into the slot. And then once you get that in place, now we need to do the other side. Same thing, flip it so it's towards the beam and then slide it into its slot. I like to use the nozzle wrench to put pressure on the belt so I can tighten up the idler. I just pull against it so the belt is tight and then I flip it over and tighten those T-nuts all the way until they're completely tight and the bracket is straight. Now we're ready to slide the assembly over the uprights. The wheels should go right into the grooves and then the threaded rod goes into the T-nut. Just keep turning that and it should be smooth. Use the wrench to adjust the eccentric nuts on the inside wheels so everything is tight and there's no play side to side. This should still move up and down pretty smoothly. Leave the cross member towards the top and then put the top beam in place. Make sure that the PTFE tubing and wiring for the hot end are underneath this, not on top. And then put the screws in. Now I like to do the two outer ones just so I get everything kind of in position. And now I'll do the two inner ones. And once I got that, then I just tighten everything down and then it should be all squared up. There's two plastic end caps and these just press fit on the end of the beam. There's one on each side. 
The spool holder mounts on the top of this beam and it's got T-nuts just like the idler had. Put it into position and then tighten those two T-nuts. Install the spool holder and make sure it's on the same side as the extruder. Now we can hook up the electrical. Each plug is labeled E for the extruder, X for the X motor, and then there's also smaller ones for the switches. Here's the X switch. It has to slide in there and if you need it, use some needle nose pliers. It helps a lot to get that in place. The Z axis has its own motor. These are keyed so they should only go in one way. Then there's the power connector. The yellow connector goes from the power supply to the board and the LCD, the connector goes into the EXP3 socket. Install the plastic clip into the extruder top, then slide the PTFE tubing all the way in, then use a blue clip to lock it in place. Make sure the power supply is set to the right voltage. In the US, you want 115. The wiring to the hot end assembly needs to be strapped in place. There's a slot right on the extruder top. Use some tie straps just to hold that in place. There's eccentric nuts on the bottom of the bed. There's two of them, one for each wheel. You want to adjust these the same way you did the uprights and make sure the bed is not wiggling back and forth. That's it. We're ready to plug it in and power it up. And make sure it's not sitting on wires like mine was so it doesn't rock back and forth. It has auto level, but it's suggested to do a manual level first to get it close. You can use the paper method or you can use my e-leveler tool which makes it quite easy. And then it comes with G-code so you can run this test print and everything was perfectly level. But this is how you would run the auto level. You go into the motion menu, you go down to level bed, and then it'll do a 16 point check across the bed and record those settings. And then you come back and go to the probe Z offset and you set the offset the same way, just sliding the paper, adjusting it until it starts to grip. And then you're set and now we just need to store these. So we go into configuration, go all the way down near the bottom and say store settings, click, and you're ready to go. I'm really happy with the manual that came with this low-cost printer. It's better than some of the more expensive printers that I've used recently. So this is really nice. Also, my e-leveler, it's not required, but it does make it easier to level the bed. I leveled this once, and then I did the auto level, and I haven't touched it in a month and a half. Also, a good set of T-handled Allen wrenches makes it a lot easier, but all the Allen wrenches required to put this together are included in the box. All my Cura Slicer 5.1 profiles that I released in a previous video will work with this machine. So the next video will be how to get started using Cura and getting your first prints. So subscribe to the channel, that way you don't miss it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here, the Filament Friday.